clone that agent again. Yeah, I used to be Phoenix back day one in Pugs and uh, all this sort of stuff, but his comfort level's definitely there on Sage. It was a secondary for him. Uh, and then obviously just due to his insane ability. He got buffed on to Raze, but I like seeing him on the Sage, man. The Battle Sage in true definition. And I hate spectating Hoppy because that crosshair, it's one of the ugliest I've ever seen. But you know what? He's able to hit some heads, but it's traded back into a three versus three. Shadow taking a decent amount of damage, but heals are possible. And I think, did they just connect? There we go. Yeah, so he's going to be back up close to 100, if not 100, actually, uh, off the back of that heal. 81. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's nice he gets traded out by the other man with an ugly crosshair. It is like they're going <laughs> back and forth. Shadow likes a... Well, in Shadow's eyes, size does matter. Let's put it that way. But 50 seconds left on the clock. We are now going to see the attack have to start making their move. Now, they've got some mid control. They've already used the wall, so or didn't have it initially, so they can't actually have any way to try and section things off. And they're actually walking into a stack. There's two players ready and waiting. Takaz is more of the bait. The switch is still waiting around the corner, but he's just going to do it on his own. He had Logan for support in the end, but Takaz, he really didn't need it. No, he didn't. He's got this under control. Don't you worry. We're talking about Battle Sage, and I guess we should have been looking over at the defensive side. 1-0 to zero now. Diffuse clock that one up, and look at that. It's the barrel. You said size matters, Tom. Well, right there is what got Angel killed. It was a little bit too long, that barrel. It's easily spotted around the corner. Uh, th this is the one map where we sort of see a lot of the agent choices coming out from... Uh, Diffuse be a lot more tactical. Like, Takas as well doesn't really stick to that Sage anymore. So, this is the one map where, again, he brings that through. And a lot of that is going to be down to denying space, slowing pushes, and giving them opportunities in the retake. That's the value of having both the Breach and, of course, the Sage as well. Now look at this push already. All right, Angel. Like we know, we know you like to get aggressive, but to be this far down mid already might be a bit of a surprise. But they've just shut the door in his face. Not interested. Not today. Thank you very much. Yeah, I feel like for Angel, he's almost uh, he pushes mid until he sees rope room, just like in split. And this time he's like, <laughs> wait, I'm I'm at the end of mid. Where is it? Did I did I go past it? He sat in pizza right now. Man, I wouldn't mind sitting and surrounded by pizza. Ooh. I'm hungry, Tom. I didn't get to eat my, my dinner. It arrived late. So, uh... Are you on some gelato? Oh, some, man. Yeah, Stop got, it. There's a shop oh, right I have there. some in the freezer downstairs, bro. Don't <laughs> don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. Uh, you can get some real nice gelato here, but... We look at this one to zero. This is a round that we don't expect a lot from FPX. Again, just to set the precedent. They've got weak weapons. They've got pistols. Defuse oh. should be just clocking this one up. But they've grouped up. And this is where even the, the weaker flash. weapons in numbers Where's can be stuff? insanely strong. Logan tucked in the corner. He's under threat. But the stun goes out towards the A site. Good flash. There's one. There's two. But that's all he's going to get. Good trade, really, for the attackers. Paranoia wasted. It doesn't catch Hoppy with that insane crosshair. Again, wh what is he doing with that? But the rest of his team able to pick it up and clean it up. Put 2-0 on the board. One loss. Yeah, you'll take that. One death isn't too bad in a round like this. W wouldn't it be great if, if the meme ended up being that it's not his crosshair and he just has the thing turned off? And it's actually our observer's crosshair and we've just been bullying him for the last five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> just, the hell is wrong with this guy? The observer's like, no, it's all right. It's good for observing. <laughs> Uh, I hope that's not the case. I'd like to apologize on behalf of Tom, <laughs> for our observer. Uh, he started this, if that's what happened. Uh, but if it's Hoppy... If that is your crosshair, it's awful. I'm, I'm sticking with it. I'm doubling down. <laughs> all in, all in. Well, look, all in on this round is exactly what FBX have done. They've got lots of rifles, one bulldog to play with. But you can see that on their opponent's side of Diffuse... The weapons are a little bit worse. Akuma in the corner. He's in a bit of danger. Going to catch the first on an Angel Flash. Going to make it around, actually. So Zipan's blind, but still able to get the second. Healed back up. His teammate was behind a smoke, so there was no support. This is the Zipan show right now, and he is going to kill. As they look towards the B site, it's Takas. He's tucked in on the stairs and looking for a victim, and Zipan might just be the next on his list. He's almost completely isolated. Hoppy doesn't have a bad position to try and deny the cross, but they will expect this. They should expect this. And Zipan, well, he is going and killing pretty much all the way through this round. Demasic will put the final nail in the coffin, but all in all, this this is not awful. Like, sure, they, they would have wanted to get maybe a little bit more an extra kill, do some damage, but you have to bear in mind what was invested here. Now, the one man standing is going to be Logan. Now, to lose a 1v4 to a Sheriff, 
There's not many teams that can do that. I mean, generally, there's not too many teams that can do it. But versus <laughs> Logan, I would say the majority of teams can do it uh, from what we've seen even just in the previous map. But Logan's playing this one very, very slow. And I don't think he has time to get even near the site. I mean, I'm pre really presuming FPX don't just leave this, and indeed they won't. I've been let down in the past, Tom. Not in this game, but in Counter-Strike. Man, I've seen some some silly rotates. And he's going to go down. Didn't twist this to is, do it. This is where most people go, Ah! Oh, Logan, what a noob! <laughs> I thought, he thought he was going to survive. No, you don't want to survive around like this. He had a sheriff, he had nothing else, and you don't get your loss bonus properly. You get punished pretty heavily if you survive the round, so he wouldn't be able to buy up properly, so instead he dies. And the benefit of dying to the spike instead of running out and taking a fight is that he doesn't give his opponent an ult charge. Now, he doesn't get one either, yeah. Uh, but it's no, a trade-off no. sometimes that's worth uh, making, especially when you look at how impactful the Breach, because it was Shadow that was taking the fight. If Shadow got that kill, one charge towards a Breach ult, that's not something you want to mess with. Look at the push. Straight away, Diffuse are taking no prisoners here. All the way down deep into A. Alt taken as well, which will almost give Akuma the rolling thunder. And the fact that they've managed to deep wall in gives them a fair bit of space. The only worry is this mid control. They've had none, absolutely nothing. So they have to try and hold from the sights. And look how far forward FBX have already managed to get. They're up in their grill as Takis sprays away and takes down Xiao. They're not ready for this many players to be here. Angel, look, he's in the back sight and they have no idea. They're still focused on the laneway, but Angel, well, he had made way. Now the spike's planted and he's in the back sight in the boathouse, ready to set sail and take this round to the high seas. Diffuse, they're going to take a while to get back into this one. Logan's on the rotate, clearing out mid, and as he finally makes his way into market, the clock is pretty low, considering it's a 2v3, and they have zero info. These players could be in B main. They could be just about to flank them out. There's so much they're lacking, yet they're still going to go forward. I can't blame them, but they've got to make a move fast and find a kill, find a duel, and it's not that kind of duel you want. Logan again in a clutch, and it just won't go his way this time. Yeah, we've seen them in similar situations like this before, but FPX, again, looking well regimented. Nobody peeking, nobody taking too many risks, and the second they make contact, there's a swing. Perfectly played in the afterplants, but also the manner in which they're taking control in these rounds is truly scary. I think there's going to have to be some sort of response into middle, because that's now multiple times where we've just seen FPX pretty much just go for a straight run down mid and just take that control for free, wall off the cross, and then just make their wrap around. And you saw how far behind Logan was. I think part of that's almost thinking, okay, there has to be someone on the rotation. But the other part of it as well is just the sheer speed in which FPX made that take. Angels up closer. That wall, oh, it comes in just in time. But they managed to destroy it instantly. It does grant a bit of a safe space for Takas to fall back to the B side at least just valuable utility gone out of the round for very little purpose because they still have to uh, dedicate a player towards this side of the map to uh, to hold it down which is a bit of a shame yeah I, I think they've had to gamble an extra player in to try and help on b the problem is we don't see the proactive approach especially in a round like this you have four pistols and a bucky i, I want to see you get some extra information instead it almost looks like they're going for an all-in gamble play but they do have to push on to short this is the info they needed hoppy can say that they're not rotating in and actually has a fast flank so i don't know if the footsteps were heard but the cage will mean he has to wait but they are going to walk into what is again a four-man stack Right into the heavy defense, but it doesn't seem to be slowing them all too much. One after another, the dominoes start to fall, and Roden looks like he's going to be the next on the list. It was close. Whenever I see a Bucky up close, it always scares me, man. But shot's not hitting. Leave Diffuse in a position they should have been in, really. I mean, this is a very light investment. They don't deserve to win this round based on that, and they don't. Yeah, it's not an upset like we saw again and again in the previous map. You just couldn't trust it. And now 3-2, to two, FPX, they're steaming into the lead. An investment from Diffuse, if they lose this, they do start to lose a bit of a grip on the, uh, on the half. Yeah, especially in the manner of which this started. They, they are starting to fall a little bit flat. And again, it's off mid-control. Like, in, in that round, I can't really blame them, but I think there has to be some sort of response, be it in the future trying to pull out an operator. I know that Roden likes to try and operate through that mid-connector. If, if he can do that, it could be fantastic. But this, really? 
He's just going to stick it. Oh my goodness, they've been pushing so much that they actually start to expect it. So Angel's just going to push straight into heaven. Oh, to clear out. oh no, Kuma should have got that. Instead, Angel just nails the headshot in the last second hop. He's trying to be a hero, but again, Angel pulls back one more. And with the res in play, the last two players, can they really do anything here? I mean, they've got double the opposition to come up against. So they've got to find two kills each, essentially. Roden and Takus, well, we know Takus is capable, but no jet, no operator in his hands. That's a bit of a nerf for him. Comes up towards the wall, look behind him. Good night, sweet dreams. Shao is coming up through middle, ready to take him down, leaving Roden all by himself. Lone soldier. He's out. He's bailing. He knows this round is not his to win. And he just needs the weapon for the next. That will be four to three. Four. Oh, hold on. He's under threat. He's running away towards the B site. But but they definitely know where he is after that recon went out. A bit of a fake. He wants to try to maybe catch a kill or two as they come down to hunt and spawn. But it's worth mentioning at this point, Tom, that this is four rounds in a row for FPX. And you lose the pistol yeah. and you find yourself 4-2 in the lead. Oh, it's a kick in the delicates for Diffuse, man. They need to get back into this one. And they need to do it soon. And, and the problem as well is the economy is really going to start to dwindle after losing that round. Yeah, the loss bonus at this stage is, of course, max maximized so they can afford to pull in rifles if they drop the armor in a lot of cases. But chances are you're just going to want to go for some pistols. The thing I have to, again, point out, FPX go from playing heavy mid control in almost every single round to a fast day take, complete change of pace, and evidently had a read on what was going on like there's been multiple rounds now where we've seen a pushes control taken so they just tp into heaven a spot where there's nobody covering and at that point you see logan actually try and push through the smoke because he realized he's screwed oh that flash perfect counter but somehow angel ends up walking out of that in a better position i mean until he gets shot in the head by roden but he did so much damage to hoppy what? roden keeps on going two kills middle shut down Taken out of the hands of FPX. Yeah. Now, it wouldn't matter if they had a res or not, because Zipan fell, but they didn't. They were far away from it, having used it up. Just, uh, two rounds. Takas does. That's true. He does. And Roden's right beside him. Does he have a wall? No. It's all their ults. He doesn't have a wall. This is a risky res as he goes out wide and down she goes. Exactly this is way. tough. They now know there's a player close mid. He's going to be pushed in the open. He's going to be sprayed, but makes it away. He'll survive fight another day or well to fight now probably a 2v3 a perfectly winnable round with these pistols and it's logan sheriff in hand pushing up the first is free and two oh but he can't get the third leaving it into the battle of breach and silva roden rotating into heaven 30 seconds left in a back and forth round tom it's being tight if roden swings now he's got this one done and it looks like he's got the timing roden with three round done secured by diffuse what a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, from start to finish, it was so aggressive from Diffuse. Of course, they had one rifle there, so it's the right play to make. I also think that the players that they lost on short, it was more just impressive from Shadow rather than a misplay because you look at how they're holding, you sort of mentioned it's a risky res. So what they do is they have the wide swing in mid. You expect, okay, everybody focuses on mid, and then they have two players rush up short to try and get the trade kills. Instead, Shadow, he doesn't even blink an eye and is still just holding that angle. Props have to go to both Rodan and Logan, though. Like, Logan's... Just, he just gets two kills with pistols in spots that, realistically, if you get one, you should have a smile on your face. What? Okay, that's the strangest push I've ever seen in my life. He's tried to flash him with his own head. Try to shoot him with it. We've already seen the Robin Hood play, but I don't even know what to call that. A Hadouken, I suppose. Either way, 4v3 emerges from that round that I pity any anybody trying to break down. A drone? I, I think it might have spotted them. Because the smoke faded just as it disappeared. Either way, whether you had the info or not, getting the kills. Out in the open, Shadow, Zipan, taking the kill on the road and together. Wall goes down. That's not stopping them from running out, but it is allowing the crossover to site. Rolling Thunder just to secure it. Now they can get the plant. Man advantage for the attackers. That doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. They're not really worried about a flank push at this point. I think they know everybody's in front of them on sights. And that's a brave swing by Zip and one at a time. They're taking these fights. It's strange to see FBX play like this. Alt line catches off the... Oh my god. It catches Takus, but he still gets the kill. And Hoppy trades it. That 
Thank That's you. strange, Tom. I, I I don't remember the last time that I saw FPX play a 3v2 by just peeking one after another. Yeah, I'm really surprised that, especially after Zipan's peak, I don't know if they didn't see the second player, but you could have then easily played through heaven, wrap back around and had the the short spot that you basically wanted for that after plant. I think it's just because they didn't have the initial info that he goes down. They didn't expect both players to be there. However, to then continue to fight it, I don't know if that's some of the confidence we saw, for example, from Xiao in the last map, where you just think you can win any situation, but they almost just give Defuse the fights that they actually want. And hey, if you're going to fight them on their own turf, Defuse a lot of the time will come out on top. So they convert around that never really looked like likely. But luckily, for the side of FPX, they do actually still have the finances. A res available for them, but I'm looking at the ults on the other side, Mitch. You have four of the five, and the fifth one is really not that far away. Yeah, they've been holding these for a little while now. Two rounds that Diffuse have uh, held on while Takus builds his ultimate right back up. Takus caught in the corner. Rolling Thunder comes in. A lot of these guys are weak, and Angel makes it into the corner. He doesn't avoid the ult. Logan keeps on going. He's conscious. There's a player on the right. He knows it. Waits for the peak, but doesn't win the dual tack is quick to come back out and get a quick old double short control is his spike is dropped and here comes help from middle as akuma's on his way dim is six shut down and akuma still not spotted about to take a peek and that closes the round easily five to four diffuse they won the pistol they lost four in a row but they're right back in the driver's seat yeah, that, that ult was so solid. It, it didn't get anywhere near as much as maybe we expected with the amount of kills they could have, but it almost just set them up to have to try and repeat to get out of the corners and didn't give FPX the same chance that we normally see them. Like They like these slower rounds where they sort of reposition, they take map control. The one thing I'm a little bit surprised by is we haven't seen them go for that same battle into middle, something that was so successful for them in the early rounds. They've almost switched up to try and go back towards A, and I'm a, I'm a little bit confused as to why. Sure, there's been adaptations from Diffuse. I'm not going to deny that. But you, you, you've you won every single round you've tried to push mid to be. Why not just keep pressing down on that weakness? Maybe they'll figure it out now as attack pause in. I will say that roof that we're seeing there on the bottom right with the, the tiles, that's a terrible roof. Whoever designed that, I mean, it's going to get <laughs> waterlogged, bro. It's flat, and it's actually higher at the edges. So good luck fixing those leaks. I don't know much about construction town, but I'll tell you what. I wasn't an architect that made that roof. Every other roof in this map is beautiful, though. So, you know, that's uh, it's a one pet peeve. Yeah, the designers are about to come for you. <laughs> you you've, you've insulted the map makers. There's going to be like a shrine to you dressed as Yoda or something. Next oh, time God. Don't say of, that. I don't give say, them ideas. Cover going yeah, I, I, I think they'd have to spend a lot of money to get the copy. Which right. <laughs> <laughs> is like a little green version of me. <laughs> Instead of a teddy bear or something. Same thing. Oh, son of a... All right, so Diffuse. We said they've got a lot of ultimates, and they still do, but Akuma, oh, he's going to take a fight before they even come up. And online, he backs away, away from the smoke, which is an interesting play. Uh, I thought he was going to wait for them to come on through and try to punish it, but... that it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a slower one. Yeah, they have gone back to it as well. Like, sure, they've left a few players lurking. They're ready for any aggression onto short, which was the counter that we saw come out a round or two after the initial few came through, allowing a quicker wraparound from the side of Diffuse. But they haven't had a counter to this yet. And I'll be honest with you, it doesn't look like they have one here. They're relying on Rodan, and bear in mind, Angel has a hero rifle. The only thing that could work out for him at this point is the timing. And instead, they're going to be locked into the back of sight and reliant on just hitting their shots. 30 seconds left. Not really where you want to be at with how FPX are playing so far. They've been on fire, but... Hell, when you've got Logan to win out clutches, why not? 20 seconds remaining. Tag up. Roden's down. Now all they have to do is pressure down Takas. He's being solid. Con in play. Dodges Paranoia. Looks for the fight on range, but can't get it done. There's one. Not good for the second. They're ready to take the oh, He committed to it. His teammate died, but he full committed. Angel gets a triple. Last player alive is Logan. A 1v2. Spike planted. Quick shot to Angel. Looks for more. Swings wide, but Chow takes him down. It's close to being another signature Logan clutch. But they win it. And I got to say, man, the head scratcher in that round, Tom. Poppy, TPing in the back site. I mean, full committing. And it's funny because I feel like more of these ults have been full committed to on rotates than actually cancelled. But in this situation, 
The timing was so terrible because Takis died and half a second later that ult was finished. So he, I don't think he had time to cancel it uh, just yeah. off reaction time. I, I think as well, he like if you're going to do that, do it when Rodan dies. Like, it, it, almost yeah. instantly. It has to be a quick response. And the problem I'm having is it, the same thing again. This is nothing new for FPX. This is something they've tried again and again. This is the adaptation I wanted to see. They've pulled out the operator onto Rodan, a very competent operator player at that, but this gives them a little bit more control into mid. He can battle, he can brawl, he can try and deny that spacing from Angel. At the same time, if this is an adaptation I expected, I am telling you now, this is an adaptation that Angel expected. Oh, 100%. You can think of it, Angel expects it. I feel like that's, that's where we're at. EP from Hoppy back away. He doesn't want to get taken down by any shenanigans, any shock darts or wall bangs or quick gold peaks. Defuse, time on the clock. They've got decent map control. They can just hold on to it, but they want to go out wide and Roden headshot, but through a very thick piece of metal. Shock oh. dart closes it out, Angel. I said if, if you can think of it, he'll expect it, but he didn't see that one coming. Well, I can tell you now. Jonas has a smile on his face. <laughs> Utility usage on point. Maybe not the operator so much, but they're going to bring Angel back. Left. The only worry now, 30 seconds left. They don't have a massive amount of map control. He's trying to work out what utility to use, and this is something FPX are a master of. It's the late round execution. They're going to look to push in. Angel, though, committing to the ultimate again. Not going to be able to capitalize on it. Poppy and Logan Spike quick to get kills. Game. Spike down through the wall. That's a big, big oh, mistake. It's, it's over. They can't get to it. There's no way. And that one little error. And you know exactly what happened there, Tom. I'm walling. I'm taking the fight. Ba, ba, ba. Dude, you've got the spike. And it's too late. <laughs> it's already gone. Last it's like, what? Who dropped it half. to me? I didn't have it at the start. You dropped it, bro. At least in my ranked games, you know? And then everyone gets called silver. I, I will say... If you're playing a competitive shooter and you shout the phrase, I'm walling, I would be very confident. <laughs> I'm going to get a few reports coming in for you. But, uh, oh, that shock dart was nasty. Beautiful. Bro. Nasty. And the, of course, that was going to be his reaction as well. It's good prediction of pathing from Roden. He tags the player and then he thinks, what are you going to do? You're not going to swing out wide. You're not going to walk to mid. You're going to you're gonna hug the wall. So that's the shock dart perfectly planned for that route. Really well done. Well, again, we're going to see the same push. It's something that has come through a fair few times, and this time actually works out. Catching out Dima 6. Shadow is still lurking around the edge of the dark cover. Does he expect it to be this close? No. And again, the man we've highlighted so many times is going to take control. Now, Angel is still here. It's been individual fights that I'm sure Logan is more than happy about, and he's already going to pick up his third. Finally, he is put down by the IGL, but it's too little too late. Angel needing a one versus three. He's going to have to channel his inner clutch. And you can see they already have a pretty damn good idea of where he is. Oh, a very good idea. Now, yeah, he, the entry fragging Brimstone has a smoke to block off the player deep in mid, but they've pushed up on short with two. They've come out on mid. He's tagged again. And the problem is Hunter's Fury is online, right? They had Rez on lockdown as well. It's scary to play the final round like that, but he's got it. They smoked it off so they couldn't even see him coming around from the side angle Sova had. He's rotating to B, or is he? Those are the steps he's making, but back towards the A side he goes. They're watching for it. They've got it cordoned left. off and sealed. Here he comes as smoke dissipates, but Akuma's ready. He was watching for the head peak angle. I don't think anyone expected Akuma to be quite that aggressive up on top, waiting for him to come on through. 7-5 at the half. I have to say, I'm really running my memory here. I'm scrolling through the rounds. Did Roden use his ult at all? Did Logan? Did we see Lockdown? Did we see Hunter's Fury? Because they held those for a long, long time. And I can't remember them being yeah. used. No, me neither. I, I think a lot of the rounds that were won as well, it, it almost seemed like if it was on A, a lot of the time it was just these 2v2 clutches after a lot of entry kills for FPX. And if it was on B, well, I would say most of the time FPX won the round. So we didn't really get to see either of them. So yeah, a bit of a peculiar half. I, I don't think the ultimate usage was definitely ideal from Diffuse, but they did manage to react quite well. Like they kept going for these aggressive plays that ended up working out for them. They did well in their sort of anti-eco rounds, but now they're going to switch up onto the attack. And this is looking like a straightforward A hit with some pace to it. 
Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a speedy one rushing in towards the site, already overwhelming it, but Angel through the smoke with the silencer. It's always beneficial. Shadow avoiding, clicking through. Oh, it was so close. Rodent on 10 HP. Could have been an easy kill. The upside here is Takus was taken down at random. The dice were roll rolled. Yeah, uh, the dice had been rolled and they unfortunately landed the wrong way for him. So no heal to bring Roden back up to full HP. That half, our fault line actually gets them, so gets them a kill, but it's traded back with Roden low. Someone needs to step it up. We need a hero for our story. And it's not Akuma. It's not Roden. It has to be Logan. A 1v4 as he moves towards the site. The first is there, but they wisely double peek him to close out the round and put it on the board for FPX. Seven to six. Closing the gap, and this means we're again looking at a very competitive half. Oh, that was, that was getting pretty close towards the end, especially how long it took them to find the spike. But yeah, a, a spike plant, a little bit of extra cash for Diffuse, but the fact that every single player actually rotates in through heaven was not something they were expecting. You could see Logan was waiting to try and catch off the players on the flank, and as you mentioned, the roll of the dice, the man falling through the smoke, just happened to be the person that could bring back the HP. So, a little bit rough, unfortunately, and likelihood is now we're going to see FPX get themselves right back into things, but, well, pretty much all the way through today, we've seen a hell of a lot of damage being done in the second round, so... Seeing this, this amount of ghosts, I, I don't know. We'll see what Diffuse can do. That we will. Divisic. Oh, whoa, okay. There's one for him. A little bit more damage down to the ghost now. Up close. Wall is in play. They know that. And they want to look for the players coming around the side. But Logan got a double. He, okay, Angel. I'll raise you one on that one, he says. Seven to seven. But, I mean, it wasn't clean. They did... Excuse me. They did lose two players, which is going to cause some reinvestment and make this... Not quite the bonus round that you'd expect. Either that, or you're going to have some serious weaknesses like ghosts coming into this one, uh, which I think some players can definitely drop over. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Oh, my. IGLs can't frag. <laughs> 13 kills in the board. <laughs> well, yeah, th this must give, like, Lothar and Jonas a fair amount of, like, positivity in their day, knowing that the, the elderly can't frag. <laughs> Either way. Seven to seven. Now we are actually going to have a Vandal invested into Angel. He made some extra cash off the kills in the last round and was only using a ghost anyway. So now he gets to try and be the star that we know he is. Looking to try and get aggressive. He's very proactive on the defense as well as the offense. You might be thinking, well, Tom, this is the point where he calms down. But no, he's still going to look to push your probe. And hey, even been spotted by the Owl Drone to give a little bit of extra information. However, these sort of rounds, normally you see... A sort of slower, more passive hold, but not if you're on the side of Defuse. They've gone straight down mid and looked to try and pressure on the same weakness they had. That fault line. Oh, along with the tag, that's a death sentence for Tactus. But Logan Quill. Oh, okay. Hello, Angel. Bit of a jump scare for him, but he still gets it done. Around the edge, he's been spotted moving to site. They know now that there's a player here they have to deal with, and Akuma does exactly that. Textbook Hoppy in the corner, waiting inside the switch room as Zipan trades. Weapon to be retrieved. They can upgrade nice and easy onto a real rifle, a Vandal. But Zipan doesn't seem rushed into doing this. He's in a 1v2, so really, you're going to need it. Moves towards the alley. There it is. Position given away. Gonna shift walk over to the right side. Time against him. 30 or so on the clock. He's got to get in there in the next five. 25, I meant. I don't know where five came from. It's not that close. It's not ticking away that fast. Swing it out. Sees Logan. This is tough. He has no idea about Akuma up beside him. And those are the two big clutch players for this team. He's got a good amount of armor. And he's got a Vandal. Is it worth saving? His questions running through his head. Finally find an answer. Trying to kill oh, him. there's a nice kill for him. And the exit... Runs out of ammo, but hold on. Has he done it? No. Logan's made it away. No. That, that's still worth it. Like, in, in any way. Like, you look at the amount of money that FPX will have going into this round, they can still purchase. It's not a problem at all. But instead, they've removed every single weapon except one. So, Diffuse, sure, they get the round over the line. But for a bonus, that's almost as good as it gets. Four kills and basically just ruining the economy of your opposition. Sure, there's a few pieces missing for themselves, however. And also, again, the ultimates have been built up a little bit more for Diffuse. So, you actually have that lockdown. And although we didn't see it massively when it comes to the defense, on the offense of this map in particular, it really can be used to take a lot of control. Oh, man, look at those spams. Dimisic lucky to only lose as much health as he did, about 50 or so, including the armor. It's disappeared. Attacker Killjoy ult going down. Looks like Logan's finally found his bind for that ultimate. 
Just jokes, of course. Last map, as you were saying, last half wasn't really called for that much. Dimasic shut down. No one can trade. No one can go out for that because, of course, that ultimate keeps them back. Now the side control is there. Man advantage for Diffuse, and they just need to slow this one down. Oh, that's nasty! Akuma with a double, and he's looking for more. Tearing the retake to... What? Zipan's got a big game himself, 4K, and it makes it easy for Xiao to close it out. I, I was latched onto one story. It was Akuma down below taking kills. They had man advantages. They left it onto two, and then out of nowhere, Zipan, he goes, and you know what? As always, this guy kills. I, I would say that going into like the history of, of the rosters that combined to make FPX, for the, the party pirates to sort of combine with what was the, the roster that was obviously Zipango Kill and all of these different teams, there had to be something special about those players. Let's be real. And this man is something special. A ridiculous round from Zipan. So individually skilled, doing it on someone who... But he really can say the voice line, I, I am not just your healer, let's be honest. And the best thing about it is, he's now got his ult. So he can rest someone if he needs to. This is where you play that little bit more aggressive, but uh, <laughs> there's only so much you can really do. You can't res three players at once over on the defuse side. And Takus, well, he's got his, uh, his choice of bodies, but on this kind of round, you're not going to go for it. You're going to wait up until the next one. You're on that full by FPX should be taking the lead here unless Takus has got, I I wouldn't say play of the week. I, I put this down to like play of the year. If you do it versus FPX, yeah, you're, you're making some serious history on that. But it's not happening. Not with the Sheriff. And it's a flawless round for FPX. Credits built up real high. And look how close they are to ultimates on Shadow and Shao. You know, in these kind of situations, Tom, when you've got two teammates who already have their ultis, I love seeing teams prioritize players like Shadow, like Shao, whose ultimates are very impactful. You know, no disrespect to Dimasic, uh, but whose ultimates are very impactful. You want them to be the ones getting that final kill. So there's some serious reward to it for you. For sure. And while there are some decent ults on the other side, the Rolling Thunder are always going to be one of the most impactful attacker side ultimates. Although we will see Akuma waiting somewhat alone. Might be trying to sell a bit of an elaborate ruse. Normally you're going to see Breach Utility used to try and set up other players. They are, however, going to drone towards A as well, giving an inkling and actually setting up for look, what looks like a far split. Now, there's information being garnered on the other side, but it's too little too late. The rotation isn't going to get there in time. And while well, this ends up as being Zipan in a tough spot once again. Yeah, that was nicely done with the Rolling Thunder. Angel rotates quickly using his ult and now looks for a kill, but there's already a player down below. It stops him from really getting near the side. And as he goes out, he's caught. Oh, that's so tough, but he still does serious damage. Shadow steps back across, so he's not stuck out in the open. But the Kuma on 30 HP, it's doable. They're going to look to go over and get this res, and they'll be able to do so very, very easily. The wall up above spotted as Angel moves into heaven. This is going to be a very direct retake. They want Shadow to find a kill. If he gets a frag on this, they can definitely win this. Logan dodges the flash for the most part. Caught down below. Hunter's Fury online, but it's not even needed. They're tearing them completely wow. asunder. Double digits for FPX on one of the cleanest retakes of the day. One of the cleanest retakes ever. I, I have no idea how they managed to do that so cleanly. Like, sure, the information that they found on the players underneath heaven was impressive. Like, they, they managed to bounce through, I think it was the dart that actually gives away the position of Logan. And, well, you clear him out of the angles that's always going to help you out but from then onwards like everything was just so clean and i i don't know maybe the crossfires from diffuse were a little bit off but it just seemed like every single member of fpx hit their shots in that moment so clinical and and from my perspective there mitch i don't know about you i was sort of starting to think like okay the, the time's gone quite far here you've been setting up for a while i'm looking at this as almost being done and yeah flawless round and now look at what's on the other side it's back to those trusty sheriffs a frenzy and by the looks of it Xiao's about to find out a lot of information but maybe information he doesn't want nice 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 secure this round but unfortunately not able to do anything because of the wall so even with the rolling thunder it delays the push but it doesn't really help them find any kills or weaken it down it's hoppy Falls, they all fall on back. They run, hoping that they've caused severe rotations, but they want to go short. There's a big problem, buddy. The wall there. And now mid's pretty much their only option straight in the crosshair of Dimasic. 
Most teammates there are quick to trade. You only lose one player and it's your your cipher. That's fine. You can definitely take those losses. I will say in the, in the previous round, Tom, just to build on your point, when you were saying that um, you thought that the time was too low, I was 100% in agreement. That's why I was spinning the yarn of if Shadow gets a kill, it's doable. But honestly, I thought if he doesn't get that rolling thunder, you can't possibly clear all those angles in time and win all those duels. And, well, they proved me wrong very quickly. It was uh, blink and you'll miss it kind of round. Yeah, for sure. And I think this round as well, the one we just witnessed, is exactly how you use your utility to delay. Like, sure, the Rolling Thunder, it's an investment just to make sure that the round's converted. But after that, strong paranoia, an aftershock as well to try and slow them all down. Like, FPX left that round, what, completely opposite of down to chance. So like, they were just sat there ready and going, okay, there is no way that you get into this site for free and eventually keep it nice and clean. It's been a bit of a rough day as well for Dima Sick. He's normally someone that we highlight as being incredibly strong even just on an individual level he's been caught a few times but realistically it hasn't mattered so much because they've had shell they've had zip and they've had angel that triple threat of death on this map and there now needs to be a strong response like diffuse just scraping through around i don't think that's going to do it for them exactly there's so much of an uphill battle here you gotta walk with conviction you can't just stroll like me when we were walking around that park in Ukraine, Tom. That was that was tough. It was a really rough day for me. So much walking, so much exercise. Well, let's see. Diffuse, they're looking to take this battle head on. Wall again going towards top, or bottom mid, I should say, as Roden picks up the opening. Okay, solid stuff. This side is playing retake. Dimasix outside of the smoke, so this should be, in theory, a nice clean one. They've spotted a player, and the wall bang is connected on the back of it. Good camera. Uh, patience, really. They waited until there was someone that they could cleanly take down. Logan spotted in the corner as well this is somewhere that especially when you still have a breach alive you can cause that player a lot of heartache this is an interesting hunter's fury coming through i don't know if that's off the back of information but Zipan, he just goes out and goes huge low hp on Roden, but hoppy's doing the work a three versus two all bangs coming in Roden, back sight trying to buy as much time as he can but hoppy that was such a good uh, fault line from Shadow. So well positioned. It catches him. That was the full HP player as well. And your teammate backside, he can't, he can't even hope to help you, can he? It must be so horrible trying to play after plants versus FPX. Because oh, just everything they do, it's like you you had great utility from Demasic initially. So he not only gets the kill that gives him his ultimate or, well, sort of gives it to him. He already had it, but it gives him the ability to use it so they can then work out where everybody is when they do have the site. The timing as well to avoid the Hunter's Fury, allowing them to clear some of the other angles while taking back control. And then, as you mentioned, right towards the end, the fault line. They just have players that basically know how to get every last ounce of their agent so 12 to 8 looking like a spot in the semi-finals is almost set for fpx but we know that diffuse have pulled off many miracles so far in the vct an attempt to pull this back a purchase in play and this time takas is just running it through they're going to try and put the pressure onto xiao dima sick will fall in an early trade but xiao is still here he spotted one of the players that's the spike down and he's buying time the rest of his team w keying their way in towards the site but they pull off the res however shadow's here but he won't catch the kill and he's moved as well shadow stepped away they find him Poppy not able to survive the day but Roden come with that trade they know they're on the site the two versus three information to play with there's nothing oh maybe they don't know there's nothing to worry about on the flank I think they've spotted all the players but well they certainly spotted Logan quick shot from him and Roden closes it out 12 to 9 defuse survive a little bit longer with three rounds to go to catch up with fpx we said they need to do it strongly they need to do it with conviction and they found this round in just that manner problem for me now is that fpx i just feel that round coming angel on an operator is a big big change and this is where the spanners start to get thrown into the works tom defuse need to be ready for plays like this one slip up and their chances of making it to playoffs decrease as they'll go down to the lower bracket who's traveling yeah for sure and the match that they've got coming up against them is likely a tough one at that yeah. with guild waiting down there for any potential opponents 
Now, the operator purchase is similar to what we saw in the previous half from Diffuse. They want to try and deny that mid control that has just been ruining them over the last couple of rounds. Zipan even going to have one of the most irritating walls you'll see on Ascent because you basically have to destroy the whole thing to be able to get through the angle. And this is what I mean. Like Angel basically expects them to try and go for this again. Okay, this has succeeded in getting them site control twice. The second time, the pace that they threw in was enough to even garner the round. Now, they do have themselves a lot of control towards A. And the reason Hoppy is playing on the other side with the spike is realistically, if he wanted to, he can just from the shadow straight into the site. I'm almost holding my breath for Diffuse at this point. Run. They're running towards the heavier side of the, the map. Angel with that operator going out for more. He wanted to, but he backs off afterwards. The blind perfectly hitting him. Xiao attempting to slow the retake, but it's not going to happen. Zipan. Oh, here's Angel. Did he just try to jump shot? I swear he was in the air. If so, that's pretty ridiculous. As it's down to a 2v3. Off lost. Player down. Rez. Possible if Zipan was alive, but he's not. For Diffuse, this should be a signed, sealed, and delivered round. Xiao sees the head. There's a quick kill. Two more to go. They know someone's over close to door. They'll focus on that angle. They see him above the wall, but it's not Sage. Sage is close. Takis has to win this for Diffuse to stay alive, and he does. All three go his way. Heads claimed, and two to go for Diffuse to make this an overtime. If your butt cheeks weren't clenched in that moment, I don't think you're a proper Diffuse fan. That was way too close in the final sections of that round. In fact, I would have almost bet on Xiao to take this Last through. Man, so One clean in these remaining. stages, but Takas will hold true. I am surprised, though, that we don't actually see just the full retake from FPX. Like, it was a little bit of a risk taken by Demas Sick getting caught out a bit in that round normally the person playing into the site however but angel does well to give them an advantage i also wonder if that might have been a victory for the spacebar gang is, is he a mouse wheel jumper could that be the reason that he jumps there mitch maybe <laughs> maybe you never know man yo two players on mid spotted angel goes out for the medimisix here as well the trades back and forth yet to determine favor logan in trouble on low hp and a swing from xiao the res comes in and it's a bait because oh a double for akuma he takes out the res and the reviver as xiao has it all to do a chance to make up for that clutch but oh perfectly done so well handled that's a chef's kiss right there both players lined up but vertically so you can't spray them down they're not blocking each other's sight and it's just impossible to win that duel when you inevitably swing for it one round left to go tom diffuse fighting for their shot in playoffs they don't want to go to the lower bracket and have to play another day another opponent and maybe not even make it there they'll miss out on points that can potentially bring them all the way to the champions uh to the champions event at the end of the year right the champion stage we don't want that you don't want to give up points at this stage when the next masters is set to be international it gets so much harder this is where you want to pick them up right here and now oh my goodness these are the plays we like to see from angel <laughs> he gets caught for it but if you're logan you got to be tilted off the face of the earth now they don't actually have the res just yet takas is only one away and he is looking around to see if he can spot any further aggression, but there isn't going to be had this time. Now, in terms of ults, we've only got one onto Dima Sick. And sure, the Neural Theft can be great in retakes, but other than that, a little bit useless. So I doubt we're going to see much impact from that at all. They're also going to start clearing out the back of the B site, but you for now at not least, not really going to spot anything out. Logan, he's brought back from the fray as well. So now, in a 5v4 situation, they are close, Mitch. I don't know if you've noticed, but Hoppy's changed the color of his crosshair as well. I don't know. I don't know what is that like a does it help? Does it change things? Who knows? But let's <laughs> see if it has any effect on this round. That res under Logan is huge, man. Getting Logan back into the fight. This is the guy you want if you're left in a clutch situation. Let's keep an eye on that if it comes to pay dividends later on. Left. Zipan takes out Akuma. That's the A site secure now. They spot players crossing Shadow. They might actually think that backside is clear. They're going to clear it anyways, but Shadow, good for the first. We talked about him before, and Xiao's here to help out. Oh, they're falling like dominoes, and it's done. A catastrophe for Diffuse. They fail to check back sight. They get peaked by Shadow, and they go.